Good morning all. Yesterday I built this little doorbell circuit from a kit that I bought on eBay for about 50p. That's just 75 US cents. Very cheap. And it's a really quite nice kit. It's a doorbell. You press the button and it makes a doorbell sound. Now one thing I didn't do um, yesterday when I was building this kit is I didn't press the button for a bit longer. So this is what happens if you press the button a bit longer. So you can see that when you press the button, the frequency of oscillation of the 555 is raised up. When you let go, the frequency drops a bit and then it times out after about one second and the oscillation stops altogether. So how is this very clever operation actually achieved using a standard 555 circuit well with a couple of extra diodes and some extra resistors and I have reverse engineered the circuit and here it is on pucker notepad paper is it a pucker pad yes it's a pucker pad so essentially it's a 555 a stable multi vibrator circuit uh, pin 6 is connected to pin 2 with a top resistor. Now this one's split into two resistors, but we won't worry about that just for the moment. Top resistor from VCC down to pin 7, a resistor from pin 7 to pin 6, and a capacitor, 10 nanofarads, from pin 6, or you might call it pin 2, down to ground. Standard multi-vibrator oscillator circuit. Pin 5, which is voltage control, they always recommend you tie it to ground through a capacitor. I never bothered, but they have another 10N there. Pin 3 is the output, goes through a 100 microfarads to this 8 ohm speaker. Now, this I think is why the chip got hot yesterday because, well, 8 ohms and 6 volts. In fact, I've got 9 volts. Let's call that 8 volts for the moment to make the math simple. 8 volts, 8 ohms, that's 1 amp. Now, of course, bear in mind that the uh, switching transistor in the 555 will lose a lot of that uh, in its own internal resistance in the voltage drop across it. So it's not going to be one amp going through that speaker. Nevertheless, it's a fair old whack of current. And you can actually even see the diaphragm of this speaker move um, on the second tone, I think it is. Let's get in a bit closer. So I'll just press the button on the 555. And I don't know whether you can see the vibration on the second tone. Yes, I think you can see the diaphragm vibrating and it's shifting quite a lot. Right, so now here's the clever bit. Here's the science bit, ladies. Pin 4 is reset and it is pulled down with a 47k resistor. But there's also a 10 microfarad capacitor there. When we press the switch, we pull pin 4 up to VCC. That enables the chip and the voltage at this point here will gradually drift down as the 47k resistor discharges the 10 microfarad capacitor and pin 4 will go low, reset the 555 and shut it off. And that's why one second after letting go of the switch, the 555 shuts down and is no longer oscillating. But the switch does something else as well. When you press the switch, you effectively short out the top of these two 47k resistors thus changing this resistor up here from about 100k to about 50k, halving its value. And that's what gives you the change in frequency. A higher frequency when you press the button and short that resistor out, and a lower frequency when you let the button go, and this full 100k is used in the circuit. Now why are these two diodes here? Well, because you don't want to connect this point of the circuit, which is oscillating, to this point in the circuit, which is just high and then drifts low, otherwise the circuit wouldn't operate. So these two diodes provide a disconnect between these two points, but allow the two points both to be pulled up to six volts when you close the switch. Now, the only component I haven't mentioned is this 10N here. It's just a bit of decoupling across the supply rails. Um, it's probably not completely essential, but it possibly just slightly smooths down the the uh, noise created by a 555, particularly when it's pushing that amount of power through the speaker, uh, that capacitor will help, certainly can't harm. 
What I like about this circuit is the rather carefree attitude to component values. All the resistors are 47K. All of the three ceramic capacitors are 10N. And then we've got a 10 microfarad and a 100 microfarad on the electrolytics. It's just nice. Now I can't quite understand why this didn't work when I first built it because I pressed the button and nothing happened. And the only thing I can think is, well, someone suggested that the capacitors might have needed to be formed. That's a possibility. The other thing is that um, maybe the current flowing through the speaker was so heavy that it just pulled the voltage down uh, to such a point where the uh, chip wouldn't operate. Why it then suddenly burst into life, I really don't know, but it certainly works now. So there it is, a little electronic doorbell kit, which I got for 50p. And you can learn a lot by building one of these simple kits if you're relatively new to electronics. This is the sort of place you should start. It's quite simple, you may have a few issues with it, but when you get it going, it's great fun. So for the moment, that's it. That's the 50p doorbell kit, but I do have a few plans for this. I'm not gonna say what they are quite yet, but uh, something will be coming up. Cheerio.